Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by... Located on Lake Pontchartrain, Brisbee's Lakefront Restaurant and Bar offers traditional West End favorites, a scenic view, oysters, and numerous tasty options. More information is available at 504-304-4125 or brisbeesrestaurant.com. Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House has been shocking here since 1979. Located at 3117 21st Street in Metairie, Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House offers raw, fried, and grilled oysters as well as a range of Cajun and Creole dishes. Enjoy a dozen with a smile. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show. Good evening, New Orleans, and welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Over the next hour, we'll talk a lot about the New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelicans, the NFL Draft. We hope to get some college baseball as well. We've got a great panel for you tonight, as always, on the show. Michael Vazan joins me each and every Friday on Inside New Orleans on WGSO Radio. Also has a great blog as well. And uh, Robert O'Shields of ABC 26 Sports are our guests tonight. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks so All much right. for being with us. For Mike, we always me. like to start off letting folks know a little bit about what you're involved in. Tell the folks about your blog and what they can catch you on the airwaves. You said it. Uh, Friday's with you, 11 o'clock every day, every Friday uh, from 11 to noon. We talk about everything that comes up in the world of sports in New Orleans, mostly Saints and LSU, Tulane, uh, local stuff. And I have my blog. It's for Zan on Football. You can Google for Zan on Football or check it out on Facebook. Um, and it's Pretty much says what it is, what it says. Just talking about football. Pretty bold draft, uh, mock draft that you got out there right now. I'm hearing about it, yeah. yeah pretty bold <laughs> mock draft. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Oh, we'll see. Robert, welcome back. Thanks for, thanks for joining us tonight. Tell you, you guys got a lot going on at ABC 26 and WB38. Talk about it. Well, we are uh, fast and moving. Especially, uh, we have Friday Night Fastball. Everybody knows our, our mainstay is Friday Night Football mm -hmm. in the fall, but we do a baseball show at Daniels and Joe Sherman, head coach at Delgado. Mm -hmm. He's going to be uh, not. He's going to be the JT replacement mm -hmm. Fridays. We will not have a show on Good Friday, but it goes all the way until the uh, beginning of May. So that's a, something to look forward to. That's on our sister station, WNOL, the CW. Starts at eleven o'clock, same time as Friday Night Football. And uh, yeah, we're we're getting ready to go. First show. Got through our first little yeah. mock uh, show, and everything seems to be. Running well. I got to catch up with the times. I said WB. It's CW now. CW now. There That's right. Go. Now I got I got to catch up here. I'll try. We know Joe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we know Joe Sherman. I was, we grew up with Joe Sherman in the same neighborhood. Well, he's a, uh, he's, he's a now being guy. a TV guy. Oh yeah, <laughs> he, he, he's he is <laughs> one of a kind, up. no doubt about it. Guys, let's start off talking a little about the New Orleans Saints, and, and of course uh, this week they signed Chase Daniel, Raphael Bush today. Mike, I'll start with you first. Does the Chase Daniel? Um, signing mean that this team maybe goes away from getting a, a quarterback in the draft? Or is this a McCown versus Daniel um, uh, uh, fight for the backup quarterback? Um, I, I think uh, it kind of eliminates the thought of Saints drafting a quarterback. I, I was never a big uh, proponent of drafting a quarterback right now. To me, there's not that guy in the draft. There's no sure thing in this draft for the quarterback. Next year, 2018 is going to be a, a really good class, but this year, mm, not so much. Question marks on every prospect they got listed. Uh, I mean, you can go from Trubisky to, to Watson to Mahomes. All of them have question marks. So I think the signing of Chase Daniel is just insurance. It's going to be McCown Daniel, see where it comes down to um, in, in training camp, and uh, I'll let those two battle out for the backup. Um, Rob, Bobby. Right now, Garrett Grayson on, on the practice squad, he really hasn't uh, uh, been the player they thought he was going to be. In your opinion, what is this signing of Daniel? Well, that was going to be my next, I was going to jump in and say that 
What, is the, what does this say about Garrett Grayson? I mean, you drafted him. You, you, you groomed him. Fourth round, you right? You kicked Chase Third Daniel round. out. Third round? Third yeah, round. You kicked Chase Daniel out. Mm -hmm. To go to, he goes to Kansas City, and then he bounces around mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, and then he's back. Mm -hmm. So what does that say about Garrett Grayson? I mean, I remember when he was picked, and everybody was like, okay, I guess Drew Brees is going to groom him. But then he got pushed. Luke McCowan got number two. Mm -hmm. Garrett's three. And then this happens. You're like, well, what is, what's going to put Garrett here? If you're going to draft Drew Brees' replacement, you're not going to find him in the third round. Mm -hmm. or you're gonna, he's going to be a, a, quote, a kind of a lottery pick type of guy. You know? Draft the Hall of Fame as a replacement in the third round. Or trade no. bait. He could be trade. Right. I could have. I, when well, I saw yeah, like Garoppolo it, he could have been New yeah, England. Yeah, right. he could have been trade but, bait. But um, you know, he said it best. I mean, um, he's he's kind of in language day on a practice squad, mm -hmm. and uh, I just think it's kind of a signal that he's his days are, are pretty much gone here. Right. Is Chase Daniel a better quarterback as he comes back to New Orleans than when he left? <clears throat> Well, here's the thing. I didn't see him play that much in Kansas City because, yeah. right. you know, we're always focused on the sure. Saints. Um, I, I'm going to use Sean Payton's thing. We'll see. Right. Yeah, That's his was, quote. We'll he see. He's a backup at Kansas yeah. City. He's mm -hmm. a little bit more experienced now. He's, well, he's more got experience. Time. He knows the offense. Right. He and mm -hmm. Drew Brees are on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. Right. Which Brees and McCown are. So in, in that respect, it's kind of surprising that they brought him in to battle with McCown. Uh, but uh, didn't McCown hurt his back or something? He didn't. So uh, maybe that's the reason, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. Raphael Bush comes back. There is a need at safety uh, right now. Um, your thoughts? I like Raphael Bush. I was sorry to see him go to the Lions. Right. I thought he's always been a pretty good safety with the Saints. He's got good range. He's a fierce tackler. He's a pretty good uh, ball, you know, ball handler. Can make make plays if they need it. And uh, he brings some toughness back there to the safety position that I think with Jarvis Bird after his injury kind of lost. And uh, you saw Bird just didn't really, he did not live up to his contract, mm -hmm. not even close. So uh, I like it. I like the fact that they brought Bush back. And then don't forget, Kid Figaro, right? First four games. Mm -hmm. That's right. Be there. That's right. You've got the suspension. So right. you got you got you got to fill those four games up, and Cause those are big, those are going to be important games. It doesn't matter who they play. Those, those four important those games, and then when the schedule comes right. out, those four, four first four games. Are very important for the Saints. Absolutely. Um, to make a statement. I wanted to ask about well, that because season, um, I, I thought he, he served that suspension last year in the last four games of the season. Uh, is he is he still on, on, on a suspension um, going forward? Well, I thought he. Uh, no, um, you may be right. Yeah. I thought he appealed. Yeah, I, I thought that he, that, okay. he, that they ended up figuring out the Saints were out of the playoffs, and and uh, and he's. He, I think he may be right. I think he served. I don't apologize but for that. He is in the last year of his deal. Yes. There there is an uncertainty with Von Bell back there in terms of can the rookie make the next step to be a starter. So Bush is great insurance right now. Right. No doubt about well, that. I mean, Apologies on that. No, but I mean, you're, you're right about the first four games being crucial. I mean, the last few seasons, they've gotten out the gate slow. They've stumbled out the gate. Right. And the first four games, it seems like in the Saints season, mm -hmm. especially, when they start off hot, they get that momentum, and it just carries them through the season. Yes. They, they've added some safeties uh, in the off season. But a lot of those guys are, are really special teamers. Right. And if you look at what they've done, they're trying to upgrade the special teams. And they, they've really kind of picked off players that have played really well on, on other teams' special teams that are here in New Orleans. And I don't know if those guys will ascend to a starting role you know, or, or even, a, even a, a role, a prominent role in terms of on the field uh, during the defense. But I think that they're, they're obviously they're going to be upgrading that special teams. Yeah, you know, special teams was the was – the was the Achilles heel because I think every Sunday every fan was saying Jesus but we're not saying in a good way because mm -hmm. it, it was either a, a blocked field goal mm -hmm. that was taken Long back oh. and goal, every kick return. And kick re yeah right. so I think Sean Payton and them are going to emphasize especially with Ted Jen Jr. coming he kind of made that known mm -hmm. that he's seen that speed from Ted you're going to see some special teams upgrade. And they got rid of the special teams mm -hmm. coach. Yeah, yeah. And so I think special teams is going to be a big influence this season. And if my guy gets picked, they're going to have a really boost. Yeah. Boost for special <laughs> Which teams. is? You, know, the, you the, want me to say my line? Go ahead. Christian McCaffrey. Right. That's my you, guy. You like him at 11. 11, baby. You like him at 11. I think that's Ooh. a little high for, for I know for, you do. Everybody thinks it. But, I'm going to uh, all the arrows. Sling them at me. <laughs> you know, I love Christian him at 32. McCaffrey. All I'm going to say is this. Watch the tape. Just watch the oh, tape. Yeah. I mean, he's fast. Oh, no. I mean, he's fast. Oh, no. He's fast. Look, fast. If, if, I mean, if he didn't have Leonard Fournette in this draft, I mean, you got to look at that. I mean, yeah. Christian McCaffrey. Fast is one of the things he is. Right. right. Well, let, let's, let's, let's jump on that right awesome. now because, again, it doesn't look. Everybody's been kind of jumping on the McCaffrey bandwagon. Maybe not at 11, but, but would like to see him maybe in the first round go to the Saints. Um, 
He is fast. He can run inside. He gives them the, uh, of something that if this that they've been missing since Sproles and, and Bush have left. And I really think they're going to address that uh, in this draft. Whether what is it Elijah McGuire out of ULL, whether it is uh, Mixon out of uh, Oklahoma, or if it's Christian McCaffrey, Mixon has so I, much baggage. I, I think That's they're going to go in that direction. Well, You're listen, right. this is why I picked McCaffrey. I love him. I think he's a great player. I think he would be, I said in my blog, nuclear in this offense. He'd be like the atom bomb. He can do so many things. And not only is he fast, he's elusive. He doesn't lose speed in his cuts. He juked the Dory Jackson out of his cleats in one of these highlights. I mean, he's just a great player. So it's obvious I like him. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Burnett's going to be there at 11. Now, he would be a guy I would consider. Mm -hmm. He's a stud, Derek Barnett, defensive yeah. end from oh, that's Tennessee. That's what I was, I was right. thinking. Yep. He's a stud, mm -hmm. no question about it. Guys like him, they usually don't make it to 11, though. And then we're not going to get the Saints, so I'm going to get a shot at Garrett. And I was hoping Solomon Thomas, but then I'm going to get a shot He's at him. Too. And that's your three guys right there. And then you got other guys like Taco Charlton and, mm -hmm. and Tack McKinley and guys like that. I think those guys kind of fall back to the pack a little bit. So then, what do, you, what do you do? I would take the playmaker, to me, who I think is the best playmaker in the first round, and some guy that, somebody that would fit into Peyton's offense so good that I, I don't think you could resist it at that point. So let's hear it. He makes a good, yeah, he makes a good point. <laughs> um, Derek, that, that's who I was going to go with because the defensive side. Right. But you can also move him to outside linebacker. Mm -hmm. I felt he reminded me of a guy that I went to school with at Troy in 2004. Marcus Ware. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, mean, I think you're right. That's because why he can I don't think because he's be because there. he can move from the because Demarcus Ware was that defensive uh, end when mm -hmm. he was picked up by the Cowboys, and then they moved him around to outside linebacker. I could when I look at the film, he kind of reminds me mm -hmm. of a guy I went to class. I'll with. say this: if Barnett's at eleven and the Saints take him, I will not be disappointed. Right. I don't think anybody will because no. I think he's legit. I just you know. I know, I, yeah, I get it. Right, let's so talk many. about cornerback at 11. Okay, well, you, I, I, think you, I think you made a great case for uh, the guys that won't be there at 11, uh, possibly, right. unless there's a run on offensive players early, which, again, you know, may be, may not happen. But what about a cornerback at, at 11 and then coming back and getting that, either that defensive end or that playmaker at 32? Well, I think you can get cornerbacks deep. I think that's a deep uh, situation. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of depth at cornerback position. A guy at 30 can give us a guy like Kevin King from Washington, 6'3", like 220. He can play safety or corner. He's got ball skills. Uh, he can play zone or man. Uh, and you can get, I got a guy in the third round from Colorado with a spoon, 6'3", 205, long, linky. You know, in the south you have Calvin Benjamin, mm -hmm. over 6'5", Mike Evans, Julio Jones, guys with wide Catch radius. I'm sorry, I'm getting your space. No, 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 Guys no. with these catch radi radiuses that are unbelievable. Calvin Benjamin. Right. And Witherspoon's that type of guy. So I think you can get defensive back, especially cornerback, mm -hmm. in the, at 32 or even in the third, as far as the third round. So I wouldn't go there with 11. Robert? Well, um, once again, I, I, I think the Saints should just. I, I, Barnett, I've been on this bandwagon since the beginning. Mm -hmm. So cornerback, you can get them. There's so many of them. You can get them later yeah. on. You can get them. You can get some loans on. And of course, I know all the LSU fans are going to be like Trey White. Right. right. Trey White. Let's get Trey White. Right. Let's get Trey White. And, and there's a possibility. Like I, I think yeah. this is the LSU, year. The same right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Like, well, a lot of people think that, but yeah. I think exactly. this is the year they may choose an LSU player. There are players that are coming out of LSU at position of need, and I think they're just tired of hearing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't take LSU players. Now I'm saying not saying they're going out of their way to get an LSU player in this draft. But when you look at Ethan Posick, you look yeah. at White, you look at some of the other players that are out there uh, uh, that, that may be available in, in the draft that, that may fit what the Saints need, uh, you know, I think there's a good possibility this may be the year. I bet you if Leonard Fournette was down at 11. Oh, well, well then, I, I mean, how could you pass uh, him up? I don't think he'll be. I think he'll yeah. No, he's not going to be at 11. Yeah. Yeah. He's not gonna, I'm, I'm hoping he ends up there. This will be the Saints. Right. They'll, definitely pick choose, an they'll, they'll definitely get an LSU Well, guy. guys, I'm just only thing I'm hoping is he doesn't end up in Carolina. Okay, well, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that he ends up in Jacksonville. There's a lot and of that's talk. That's another thing. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No. Well, look, Carolina's picking Fournette. Um, their running back, whose name escapes it right now, who's had a really good career, the kid from Oregon, uh, Stewart, Stewart, Stewart yeah. is, uh, he's on his way out. Um, if the Saints don't pick McCaffrey, they, every signs are that Tampa Bay's going to pick him or Dalvin Cook. 
So now you're going to be facing a Tampa Bay with a legit running back, a Carolina with a, re a legit running back, and Atlanta's got those two guys that are really good. Mm -hmm. So what do you have in, in your backfield? You have Mark Ingram, who had 1,000 yards last season, but is he really explosive like those other guys can be? So you've made your case. <laughs> um, what about the what about the uh, up to this point? What they've done in free agency? The sleeper for me is Alex Okafor. Comes in on a one-year deal. It's kind of a fairly uh, prove it to me deal. He's a guy that that sat behind Chandler Jones last year, but had to, had to, had some injuries that slowed him down. Uh, he's got the skill set to be a great pass rusher for this team uh, if he can stay healthy because he's going to have every opportunity. He's the guy that I've kind of focused on along with, with Walford that I think are two of the real keys coming out of this free agency period thus far. Well, I think this is like the show uh, Fixer Upper. <laughs> We're I love these, that show. We, I do too. My wife loves that uh -huh. show. We sit there. Yeah. Uh, we have it on DVR like crazy. Um, we're getting those pieces mm -hmm. to build this house, to make it look nice. We just got to see what the end result is. Um, but it scares me with these one-year deals like you mentioned. It, I like to see the Saints get away from these one-year deals. This is like the Pelicans in these 10-day mm -hmm. contracts. Mm -hmm. Let's look for the long term. Right. Let's look for the future. I, I feel like it's, it's just like the society now. It's always about now, 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 now. But you can only have now for this short amount of time. Let's try to... Let's try to be like a New England. Let's try to build. And but there are question marks with Okafor. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 yeah. And, that, and that's why it's a one-year uh, deal. Right. By September, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's hard to get leverage when you don't have 100% mm -hmm. bicep. So I think this is, it's a look-see for both sides, Okafor and the right. Saints. And it's kind of a trial run. And it's kind of like the Fairley deal last season. Mm -hmm. Let me see what you got. We'll, we'll reward you mm -hmm. if you come in and play. Bird's the same way. Mm -hmm. He was coming off of a back injury. Mm -hmm. But, but we didn't know about the back injury until right. they signed him. I, I think somebody, I think, they, I think we kind of, kind of did. Yeah, well, th th that well, was. Well, maybe we just, we were in denial because he right. was such a big name. Right. But I don't remember the back injury until after they signed him with Bird. Ted Ginn, you like him? Yeah, I thought, I mean, he was amazing in, in college. He's done great in the pros. Um, he's going to be a special teams guy. I don't see him being an everyday, I mean, every down player. I think he's going to be a special teams guy like we talked about. What do you, what do you think about like getting to the table? I think Ted Ginn's uh, got speed. He can also return kicks. And he can do other things that Brandon Cooks couldn't do, such as run a, a wide receiver screen or bubble screen or reverse or something like that. So I think what Brandon Cooks had on Ginn was his Consistency with catching the ball. Ginn's got a problem with dropping the ball. He makes up for another aspects of, the, of his game, but he's a little bit older, but still, he, he's still fast. Uh, this week, Sean Payton had some good things to say about Larry Walford. Uh, when, when I went back, and I, and I remember um, watching the Detroit Lions, he stuck out to me. Uh, obviously, Joe Lombardi, one of the first things I thought was when, when they signed him was, Lombardi knows this guy inside and out because he was, he was in, in Detroit for a short time as the offensive coordinator. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Carl Nix. Now, I'm not saying he's the second coming of Carl Nix, but he reminds me a lot of Nix. And, and of course, uh, uh, if you listen to the comments of Sean Payton this week, he, had, he raved about him. Right. Um, and I've said on this the program before, Drew Brees is your main asset on the team, and you have to protect him. You, you, you've got to protect him like those prisoners, not the prisoners, but the guards at Fort Knox. You know, you've got to protect him and to get that line to protect him. Because a couple of years ago, I mean, I thought I saw Drew Brees more on the ground than, than anybody. Well, I mean, until Carl Nix left, I don't remember Drew Brees having a tippy toe to step up the middle. Right. He used to have a clear path mm -hmm. up that Great middle, point. which is his comfort zone. That's his wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. So that, that one move, to me, was a big difference in the Saints' offense. When, they, when the Saints and Carl Nix parted ways, it, made a, it left a big hole there. And it hasn't been filled since. And if Wolford can come in and be as, almost as good as Nix, then I think that would be great, especially for Bree so he can step up in the pocket and not have to feel like he can't get up there, so now he's got a tiptoe to right. see over the line. A.J. Klein and Monte Teo are brought in at the linebacker position. Your thoughts? Good guys. I mean, Klein's been a backup, but he's one of these guys, like when the Saints brought in Scott Fujita, you didn't really hear Scott Shanley. You mm -hmm. didn't really hear about these guys. 
but they were right on the cusp. And I think Klein is too. He's playing behind a, a potential Hall of Famer and Luke Keekley in Carolina, so he's never going to start. Right. So he gets a shot here in, in New Orleans. And f physically, he's about the same as Keekley, his size and speed combination. Mm -hmm. He just needs playing time. And he, believe me, with the Saints linebacker call, he'll be able to get in and get some good playing time. Well, Keekley was out. <clears throat> Because of uh, I think concussion. a concussion, yes, yeah. he stepped up. He did well. Yeah, he did well. He played well. He did. Now he, he played he, behind Carolina's defensive line, but right. still, he did. but he raised eyebrows. He did. He did raise eyebrows. I yeah. think that's what, and I bet you the Saints were watching that same game. Uh, I forgot who they played, but they they kept a mental note. And plus, we see him twice a year. Right. They're gonna keep a mental note. Which, and, and they and got they got tape on yeah, all these guys. Everybody. So and I like when a team within the division takes players that are critical to the to, to a, another team in the division off right. that roster. Yeah. Right. You know, when you weaken that other team, when you have, now you make that team have to go out and fill that position. The Saints did that with Ginn and, and Klein. The, the, the big um, question mark so far in this offseason, will the Saints make a move uh, for uh, Malcolm Butler? And I'm on the record of saying that uh, I would not give up any of the picks within the first 103 uh, Saints have five picks from the first round, three for Butler. I'd much rather see this be delayed and go into next season and uh, possibly give up a conditional two on in, in next year's draft. Uh, you know, not saying that, that he wouldn't come in and be the best corner on, on, the, uh, on the roster, but, um, you know, I have my reservations. Uh, you know, why pay Gilmore? Uh, you know, uh, when you look at uh, the situation right now uh, with, uh, with Butler at this point, uh, yeah, I think he'll be the best corner on this team. Can they afford to pay him $13 million a year with Breeze coming up next year, Vaccaro coming up next year uh, with contracts? Uh, I'll take you first, uh, uh, Bobby. What are your thoughts on, 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 the, on the deal? Uh, would you like to see it done? Would you give up the 32nd pick? Um, you know, uh, wh where do you think the Saints go? I don't, I don't think they should, they should bother. I really don't. Um, because you're just, you're just giving out draft picks, and then you, you just traded Brandon Cooks to him. And then you're going to give them back that draft pick they gave you to get a guy. I don't. I just said I don't think it's going to happen. I think the deal's not going to happen at all. I think Mickey Loomis saying they were just kicking the tire just to mm -hmm. see what happened. But I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to focus on the draft because um, they could get a good player that can be more impactful um, on that defense than Malcolm Butler. We talk about this, it seems like every Friday for the last month we've been talking about this. Right. Your thoughts? Well, you listen to Belichick, you listen to Peyton, it sounds like the deal's done. He, Belichick saying no deal, Peyton saying eh, no deal, which probably means they'll have a press conference in a week announcing <laughs> that they just signed, made a deal with Malcolm Butler. But having said that, I already got the, a guy picked on my mock draft for that spot. They better not make <laughs> right. this deal. To me, as far as I'm concerned, the deal's off. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen now. Do you like the Cooks deal? Do you like what they did? Do you like what they got in, in return for Brandon Cooks? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I thought Brandon Cooks worked well in this offense. I liked, I liked his contributions. But when he complained about not getting um, a pass thrown to him in, in the Rams game, a game they, they won going away, that kind of raised my eyebrow a little bit. So uh, uh, what they got for him in return, we'll see who they pick. I have Charles Harris from Missouri at that spot. A really good Dwight Freeney type defensive end with a great spin move. Spin move. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's super quick. He comes off the edge fast and he's tenacious. So if, if they can make, if you can say, okay, we got Brandon Cooks, we gave him up for this guy who's gonna put pressure on the quarterback, it's a good deal. It all depends who they pick, right? Cooks in the fourth round pick, which is 118 traded to the Patriots for their first round pick, 32 overall, and the third round pick, which is a compensatory pick they got from Cleveland, 103rd overall. Your thoughts? I think when we learn a lesson from either player or coach, do not mess with Sean Payton, i.e. Rex Ryan. There was a feud. They said there wasn't a feud. There was a feud. Ryan's gone. Brandon Cooks was upset. Did not get a single target at the Rams game. He allegedly, I'm not saying that it's, this happened, allegedly he had some words with Peyton. And now where is Brandon Cooks? No longer in the locker room. Right. I think he wasn't the only person that, <clears throat> I'm talking about Sean Payton, that Cooks have ran into. Um, I think there's a, there have been players, too, that have vocalized about his attitude. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think um, 
I think this was best for both sides. Mm -hmm. The Saints can get somebody out of the way and not worry, deal with the off the field issues. But then the Patriots, I could see Brandon Cooks going, you know what? This is my second Hall of Fame quarterback that I'm going to play oh, with. Man. He must have think they traded him to heaven. Right. He just became a three-time lotto winner. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I do In question Boston. his ability to go over the middle. I'll say that right now. Uh, you right. know, again, he doesn't want to be the uh, decoy, the speed guy. You know, they use Moss in a lot of cases, trying to use right. him uh, to go long. You heard uh, the owner of the Patriots talking about uh, that. It reminded him a lot of Randy Moss. Mm -hmm. I guess that you know we'll see what they're, uh, what, what ultimately they're, how they're going to utilize him, but. You know, those Patriot receivers, they give up their bodies over the middle. That's something they do. And that's something that Cooks here in New Orleans, I'm not saying he didn't catch the ball consistently. I'm saying he didn't, you didn't see yak, yak yard. You didn't see yards after catch when he went over the that's middle. That's the thing about Cooks. He's not a guy that's going to catch a five yard in, break two tackles, juke a couple guys, and take it to the house. Right. He's not that guy. But if you need somebody to beat somebody down the sideline, that's your man. Mm -hmm. And Bob Kraft is one of the greatest owners in sports. Mm -hmm. Brandon Cooks isn't even close to a Randy no, Boss. No. Not even close. But he's got to build up, you know, talk, talk it up. So. Right. Uh, Daryl Tapp resigns. I like that resigning. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, I think that he gives them uh, some stability there. You know, you mentioned, uh, Bobby, the um, uh, alleged uh, uh, maybe argument between um, uh, Brandon Cooks. It was said that, again, he got in an argument with coaches in the locker room after that game, that Los Angeles game. You know, we saw the same thing on the sidelines uh, with Mark Ingram. Uh, anticipate anything happening with Mark Ingram down the line here, or is that a different scenario altogether? I think it's a different scenario. I do too. Because Mark Ingram is, is their every down back. He is the number one running back. Brandon Cooks had Willie Sneed. You got Michael Thomas. You got other options that, that they can do offense around. But if you need a running game, Mark Ingram is your man. And I believe, I, you know, that's just the, the heat of the moment, as they say with uh, Ingram and, and Peyton. Ingram did it like a man. He's, he went face to face, mm -hmm. voiced his displeasure aggressively. It was in the heat of the moment. He, had, he felt he earned the right to go in and score that touchdown. If you don't remember, they were, right. they mm -hmm. were driving. He carried the ball right. all, the whole drive, and then they take him out to rest him. And we don't know if when they got to the locker room, he went up to Peyton and said, look, my bad. We don't know if any of that mm -hmm. happened. But I, I think it's completely different from the Cook situation where Cooks tweets something and Mark Ingram goes to the person he's got a problem with and talks to him directly. Right. Yep. Uh, you're watching Inside New Orleans Sports each and every Thursday night right here on WLAE TV with our live broadcast at 6 p.m. You can catch a rebroadcast on Friday nights now on Cox 130. That's at 10 o'clock. And then on Friday night, three chances to catch us. Pelican Broadcasting at 9 o'clock. That's statewide. Back here on WLAE at 10 p.m. And if you're up late, 2 a.m. on Cox 130. I'm your host, Eric Asher, Mike Mazan of WGSO Radio, Robert O'Shields of ABC 26. Or our guest tonight, we're going to shift gears, talk a little basketball in the uh, second half of the show. We'll open up the phone lines about 45 minutes into the show as well. Don't go anywhere. Located at 3701 Iberville Street in Mid-City is Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Open seven days a week, Katie's offers daily specials for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Serving New Orleans cuisine such as fried shrimp platters, grilled redfish, and a fully stocked bar. And don't forget about our expanded event seating and local entertainment. Featured on the Best of Food Network's diners, drive-ins, and dives, Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Amco Fence, locally owned and operated since 1976. Fully licensed and insured and a member of the BBB, Amco serves both residential and commercial customers. If you're looking to repair, replace, or install a fence for security or aesthetic reasons, Amco Fence supplies wooden, metal, chain link, vinyl, and ornamental or automatic gates. Amco aims to satisfy your fencing needs. Amco Fence, 504-468-9559 or amcofencecompany.com. Tick Tock Cafe, located on Causeway South at the I-10 in Metairie, is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Our menu offers breakfast dishes like our Western omelet, made from scratch biscuits, grits, egg sunny side up, and lunch specials like our homemade cheeseburgers with a side of golden brown fries. Don't forget about our weekday lunch special and that every Tuesday is steak night. Tick Tock Cafe, open 24-7 at Causeway South at the I-10 in Metairie. 
Welcome back to Inside New Orleans Sports. Our guest tonight, Mike Vazan of WGSO Radio, Robert O'Shields of ABC 26 Sports. Guys, let's talk a little basketball before we get into the Pelicans. Will Wade has been announced as the heads, um, head men's basketball coach at LSU. Um, a guy that's had four years of head coaching experience, two years at Tennessee Chattanooga, two years at VCU. Uh, he walked into a program that VCU has been in, in the uh, NCAA tournament since 2005, a 20 game winner since 2005. If you look at the history of Will Wade at um, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee Chattanooga, uh, he had a pretty good year his second year. It was really the third year after he left. They won 29 games with his players. Uh, he brings a lot of energy. And um, Mike, you mentioned it to me uh, off the air, on the air. You've been on the Will Wade bandwagon even before anyone in Louisiana knew who Will Wade was. I just think he's a great young coach, um, ready to, uh, you know, make his mark on the scene. I mean, he's uh, he, typical, climb the coaching ladder, you know, Chattanooga, then VCU. And now he's coming to a program, really, LSU is probably, if not equal, a little bit less than VCU at this point. But like Nick Saban said, Will Wade said, LSU is a sleeping giant, because it is. With the talent they have in Louisiana and in South Texas, Southeast Texas, um, it could be. And I just think uh, he's one of these guys, X and O's, he's got it. He, every base is covered. Small little details. I mean, just the way his, his press conference, his mannerisms, mm -hmm. talking about kids going to go to school, they're going to sit in the first row. Now, I don't know whether Johnny Jones's kids did that, and I'm not trying to disparage him. But I just think he's just got another level, another little inner intensity about him that um, I think LSU basketball needs. He could be like a young version of Dale Brown that can coach during the game. I think this is like a, a, a major league baseball player. They start off in the minors, mm -hmm. and he did that. Mm -hmm. And he became a proven winner in those right. quote-unquote minor league mm -hmm. schools. And now he's gotten the call. I mean, the ultimate call is the NBA, if he, mm -hmm. that was his ambition. Sure. But he's gotten to a call where the SEC is not just a football. I mean, let's look at the NCAA tournament. Right. right. I mean, yeah. well, SEC. Exactly. And the coaches in, in the SEC right. as well. So he is yeah. coming in. He's got the call up. Now, he's got a, if he's, if he, the track record shows he's been a proven winner, mm -hmm. all indications is LSU basketball may be coming back. I think so. I, I have a great deal of confidence in him. Three I recruits in the top, I'm sorry, three recruits in the top 100, uh, one at Tennessee Chattanooga, two at VCU. Uh, one thing that he mentioned, Mike, was he loves the athletes in Louisiana to play his style, which is right. about right. Six, eight, and under. Guys that, that, that again, um, uh, can be physical but are great, great athletes. Uh, he's not looking for the seven-footer out there, although those are nice to be able to right. bring in. Uh, and then the trapping defense. You know, he wants an aggressive trapping defense. You know, I, I talk about the 40 minutes of hell that, that Arkansas had for years uh, that was very, very frustrating to teams to play. And then, of course, on offense, you know, again, a, a, a quick pace, up-tempo offense as well. Well, I love this, his attitude is we're going to be the best we can be every second of every day. We're going to get on a bus the best way. We're going to get off the bus the best way. They're going to, they're going to run that defense, that, that Havoc defense. And he feels like Louisiana is primed, the, the talent in this state is primed to run his system. And with the trapping, with the uh, of running up and down the floor, you know, fast break type of offense, th things of that nature. And I think it's going to be a perfect combination of great coach, great recruiter, and, t and sufficient enough talent in the state to bring LSU basketball back. You know, Bobby, ABC 26 is known for uh, covering prep sports here in, in Louisiana and in the New Orleans area. You've seen a lot of these young basketball players that are coming out of Louisiana. Uh, they do kind of fit what he wants to do. They do. They do. Uh, when he was talking about those Louisiana uh, players, you know, the first person I thought of was a guy that I still think was one of, well, I've only been here for 10 years, one of the best basketball mm -hmm. players I've ever seen play, Greg Monroe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. When I saw him play at Helen, Helen Cox, Cox, oh, it was like That's just going there. And I loved going over to Helen Cox uh, to watch them, to watch him play, and to see his progression now with the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm -hmm. When he was talking about getting those recruits, that, that was like the first person. Like we get a, if you get, if he gets a Greg Monroe type, yes. Right. Whew. Well, the kid Robinson out of out of Chalmette right now was in the right. McDonald's All American game last night and played pretty well. You know, he's going to Western Kentucky. Right. I don't know if you can you can spin him now at this point, but you know those are the type of guys that can't get away. Right, that's right. And there's like two guys. One guy from Madison Prep, because we um, Chalmette played Madison Prep in Chalmette. We were uh, at Daniels and I were at the game, 
and the Western Kentucky assistant coach was sitting there mm -hmm. just smiling because mm -hmm. he knew those <laughs> both of those guys are going to be playing for him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was like a dunk fest that night. Right. Let's talk about the Pelicans, winners of seven of their last nine games, really gelling as we get to the end of the season. I think they're playing the best ball of, of the Alvin Gentry era right now, yeah. uh, uh, being here right now. Uh, the addition of Jordan Crawford has meant a lot to this team in opening up the offense, spacing the floor uh, for both Davis and Cousins. Uh, Robert, I'll start with you first. Your thoughts on the Pelicans, where they are right now? Because uh, I do want to morph into talking about the future of Alvin Gentry and, and Dell Demps, but you know, finally kind of coming together after, after the uh, Boogie Cousins trade. Well, I think the next, um, this next handful of games coming up is going to be um, Alvin Gentry's, I guess, test if he's going to stay or if he's going to be staying around because before the, the, the Cousins trade, I went ahead and said, yeah, he might as well start selling house, mm -hmm. start looking at other places because he wasn't. Same thing with Dell Demps. They, mm -hmm. were, they weren't doing anything. They were getting booed. They were getting booed at home. You know, they're not supposed to get booed at home. When they do the player introductions, they said head coach Alvin Gentry. There's a course of boos. Um, he's, got a, he, he's got a litmus test coming up in these next few games, especially with Denver playing him twice there and here near the end. Um, big win last night against Dallas. You needed to win that. Mm -hmm. If you lost to Dallas, who Dallas was at that time ahead of you, yes. um, I was thinking that, yeah, there's no shot of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You do still have that small glimmer, mm -hmm. um, but if you don't make the playoffs, they don't make the playoffs. I'm not going to be mad about mm -hmm. that because uh, I can also see next year they could get maybe one more piece. They've got the pieces. They've got, the, they've got three guys that can – carry this team. Maybe another piece for a bench mm -hmm. to be the leader of the bench. I think uh, they can make it. Pelicans 32 and 43. They're uh, in 10th place. This is the closest they've been to the eighth seed. Uh, they're four games out of the eighth seed with seven games to play. Last four games will be on the road for the Pelicans. Mike, what are your thoughts as you look at this Pelican team uh, since the Boogie Cousins trade? Uh, you know, one thing I can say about Gentry is he's kind of changed his style a little bit uh, with, with Boogie right. Cousins and, and Davis on the floor. Something that I think he had to do, something that I think a lot of us questioned whether he was able to do. Well, I think he's pretty much answered that question to, for now, that he was able to change his style, adapt his style to the talent that he has, and uh, it took a while for everyone to figure everything out. And they, now they're hitting their stride, obviously. And um, I was reading a post that you posted that I didn't realize Anthony Davis just tied a record for Sha uh, with Shaq with 30 points, thir 13, thir 13 rebounds, rebounds for how many consecutive? Four games in a row. Four games. And then Cousins had, what, 29 mm -hmm. and 14 or something? Mm -hmm. If they can get that production on a nightly basis for those two guys and you throw in Holiday and a few other guys, I don't think Gentry's just coaching for his job. I think Dell Demps is saying, please, come on, Gentry, because he's, co he's coaching to save Demps' job, right. too. Do both deserve to, to, to return, in your opinion? My, you know, the, the audience still is my opinion. You know, again, I don't think that the uh, pulling a rabbit out of your hat, uh, getting a Cousins in a fire sale to New Orleans, uh, saves the job of Dell Demps when you look at the seven-year body of work. And then... I think if you do bring a new general manager, and I think it's unfair not to give him the opportunity to name his own coach. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the brass at the, at the uh, Pelicans do, uh, if they're going to make this move. But what's your opinion? What do you think happens at the end of the season? Well, Pelicans are just like the Saints. They want to win right now. Tom Benson wants to win right now. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I think it, this is going to be it for Dell Demps. Um, to get somebody else in, that can, Dell Demps got us to this position where we are with cousins and everything. If we get somebody else in to maybe push us further on to get somebody that he can negotiate to get. Um, but yeah, I think also Alvin Gentry, I'm still waiting because I remember when Golden State Warriors won on NBA <laughs> TV, mm -hmm. Alvin Gentry with a champagne bottle and everything yelling at Anthony Davis, you're going to be here, we're yeah. going to be here. I'm still waiting for my champagne bottles, and we're going to be here. Right. Mike, your thoughts on Demps, on Gentry, on, on if they've done enough to return? They do this to this every season, it seems like, the Pelicans. They frustrate the heck out of us all year, and then they start playing good right at the right. end. And they, well, maybe we can keep them another season and see what happens. But I don't know if you can risk that. I mean, you got, you got to sell season tickets. I mean, you got stuff that um, – 
the, the uh, Pelicans can really be teetering now financially if they don't get start get some kind of draw there. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I, I think a general man a change at something, general manager, coach, is coming. Whether it's both of them or one of them, but it's coming. And I think if it's any of them, it'll be Dems. Right. And then, and that's my feeling. And look. Jeffrey came in with the graphs and the videos on how he was going to get uh, Anthony Davis uh, uh, in that up-tempo offense that we saw in Golden State. He didn't get the pieces to do that. Demps didn't give him the piece to do that. Demps has been very good in bringing guys on the back of the roster. We see it with a Jordan Crawford. He's done that very, very well throughout his tenure here in New Orleans. He's a guy that's got D-League ties. He understands the D-League. He understands European basketball. And because he's got those ties there, he's been able to fill out the back end of the roster. It's the front end of the roster that's been problems. Omer Sheik's contract. You look oh. at you know a lot of the other contracts that have just kind of blown up in their face. Uh, even this year, again, the money that they spent. Even though Solomon Hill's playing well right now, one would question you know eleven million dollars for Solomon Hill. So again, that I think that's been part of the problem. And look, it is a bottom line business sports, professional sports, and rarely do you get a chance to get a third chance to be able to resurrect a franchise, especially when you've only got, what, one playoff appearance during those seven years? So again- you fired the coach that got you there. Exactly, and which again tells you that in that power struggle, Demps won, but yet Gentry has not taken them to the playoffs since then. So right. it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, you know, I, I, I wanna see what the next step is gonna be as well. Uh, I like the fact that Drew Holiday's playing the off guard now. I think he's much more yeah. comfortable there. Will he want to sign with New Orleans, resign with New Orleans, and stay in that position? But I think they need to have a, uh, again, a point guard with a strong personality, mm -hmm. a guy that, that that doesn't necessarily need the ball in terms of scoring, that can that can dish the basketball. You know, we keep hearing the Chris Paul type. Chris Paul's not leaving Los Angeles. He's not leaving the Clippers. But they need that type of player, I believe, with a Cousins and with a, a Davis on the floor. Yeah, I agree. I mean. The, the other two, you didn't even mention this, Quincy Pondexter. Mm -hmm. Where are you, Quincy? Right. <laughs> you haven't played since the postseason of 2015. So right. that's the other dead money that's just sitting there. He's not on the bench. He's right. not wearing a suit. Don't even see him. Right. I see all these these posts from the Pelicans. Oh, Quincy Pondexter shooting, shooting around. But he oh. wasn't there that night at right. the game. That's another one. Yeah, Osik, is, they just announced today right. he's done for the year. Right, done for the year. Bacterial um, infection. Right. So NBA there's so much. Man. There is so much wasted money right that's on that bench that deal and dell that's that that's him that that gonna be his legacy of all these well, contracts not to mention, he's got eric gordon that, that set him back right, financially right. a couple well, of years ago the best the, the best move he ever made that he made or dell Dumps made i've said it before ryan anderson anderson comes from orlando still in the prime of his career they get him at 8.5 million dollars a year for four years uh you know that's a steal for a guy like ryan right. anderson but they weren't able to capitalize on it there's no doubt they've had bad luck when it comes to injuries you know anderson davis um uh, gordon uh, that, that that's part of it but you know that's sports mm -hmm. that's the way it is in professional sports you know you got to be able to to be do something to overcome that and when you you know add insult to injury look what gordon and and anderson are doing in Houston yeah. right now. Yeah. So, you know, They're I'm not on, being injured. Right. I'm on the I'm on the record as saying I think that uh, a new broom should sweep clean when it comes to the Pelicans and I think they need to show the fan base yeah. that there that there's a new day. And also, you know, you don't want to do this next year with DeMarcus Cousins in his last year of his deal. Right. Cousins has always had an issue with, you know, um, uh, the the changeover that we saw at Sacramento. And and I think you need to have a solid front office and someone with a vision for these two guys because let me tell you something. This is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime deal right now to have to have these two big men in New Orleans at the same time in their prime. Uh, guys, before we go to the phone lines, quick quick comment on LSU baseball. Boy, there are a lot of people right now that are really frustrated about what's going on and a little bit afraid, uh, you know, by well, the midweek games, losing to UNO, Tulane, uh, and some other state schools, uh, going into Florida last week, not being able to get out of Florida uh, with winning that series. Michael, I'll start with you first. You follow the Tiger baseball very closely. How good is this team this year? Were the expectations too high? No. They are very talented. Um, they have a great combination of youth and experience. They can hit. They can pitch. This is one of those mid-season swoons baseball teams go through. They started out pretty hot, and then they ran into some buzzsaws during the week, no doubt about it. 
uh, LSU's coaching staff likes to play around Tinker. They pitched a guy against Tulane that they never that hasn't seen the diamond at all the other night. They brought him in to in, in the last inning. Uh, Bush, I think his name is, it, just to see. So they use a different approach to midweek games. But I will say this: they better be careful because it could help, hurt them in seeding come down the line. Now the Florida series. We talked about it Friday. I didn't think the LSU was going to win that series. They don't match up well with them for whatever reason, pitching, hitting, whatever. They got A&M this, this weekend, tonight, if it doesn't rain out, and we'll see what happens here. Um, I still think they can, they can go to the College World Series. I still think they will, but uh, that's just where I stand right now. I'm a little nervous about just not only LSU baseball, but Louisiana baseball. Mm -hmm. Tulane. I mean, you, you lose a series against Stetson. Yes. That was kind yeah. of shocking. Right. Right. Um, but then turn around and beat LSU. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, very, it's a very big question mark on both the Tigers and the Green Wave. The same thing you UNO, right? UNO. UNO has been up and down. Right. They, they did not do well mm -hmm. on the road uh, this past weekend. But LSU baseball, I think they're like the Pelicans. Wait till the very end, and they're going to be hot well, on fire. You want to be in, in and, baseball. You want to be hot at the end, end of the season, right? And um, you know, it tells you something. They lose in these midweek ga games, and those teams are going and losing weekend series mm -hmm. when the front line guys are pitching. So, I don't know. <coughs> I think, it, like old Yogi Berra once said, it gets late early if you keep messing around like this. And they've had a couple. Hunter Newman gets hurt. He might be coming back this weekend. Yes. They lost Bo Jordan. Uh, Bryce Jordan, one of the Jordans mm -hmm. they lost yeah. for the season. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we shall see. We shall see. Let's head to the phone lines. 866-3200 to uh, Brian and Metairie. Brian, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Brian. Hey. I got two things real quick, and then I'm going to listen to what y'all's comments are. Uh, uh, first one, this Butler trade. I don't think we need to trade Butler. Let's see what we're going to get in the draft and get it over with. Uh, too much money, and we should learn from the Bird incident that, you know, you never know what's underlying there. He's, he's, they're getting rid of him, I think, for more reasons than we know. And I could be wrong on that, but it's just not worth it. And secondly, I can speak as, as a fan. If, De if Demps and uh, what's his name, uh, the, the other coach, the coach, does not go, I'll never set foot in the arena again. Excellent. They need to go. They should have been gone years ago. I'll listen to your comments. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. That's a strong statement. Too little, too late for right. some of the fans. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what we said. I mean, that's, yeah, um, yeah the Butler thing, yeah, he's right. We don't know. Just like Bird in Buffalo. Right. We're going to spend all this money on this guy, then come back. They have a back issue. Let's go to uh, Paula in Bell Chase. Paula, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Paula. Hi. Hey, Paula. Joe. Hey, Paul. Your question? Comment? Okay. I was wondering if you think that the Saints can get Desmond King. Desmond King. Guys? Anybody? Desmond in? King. Uh, I'm no. not sure who Desmond King is, i got to be I'm honest. It's Kevin King from the right. cornerback. Right. I'm not sure okay. about Desmond Talking about the punter from, from the Raiders? We'll, we'll, do, we'll do some uh, some research on that for you, Paula. To Jeffrey on mm -hmm. the West Bank. Uh, Jeffrey, welcome. Hey, well, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I've been watching a lot of pre-draft uh, pre um, shows around uh, mm -hmm. on, on these different networks, and I noticed a lot of them are down down and playing uh, Leonard Fournette's talent. And I, I even heard one guy say uh, he's the third best back in the uh, in the upcoming draft. I, I wanted to know what you think about that, and I've heard that uh, – he might go to Carolina. I want to know. I want. I want. I want to know what you think about the Saints having to be uh, almost facing this guy twice a year. Is that is that possible? Thank you for the phone call, guys. Well, Leonard Fournette, the third best back. Um, Leonard Fournette's the best running back <laughs> in the last few years coming out of the draft. <laughs> he was the best back in Friday nights. He was uh, the best back in Saturday nights. And he's definitely going to be the best back he, on Sundays and Monday nights. He's going to walk if he gets drafted by Carolina. Mark 1,500 yards, 12 to 1,500 yards rushing, another four, three, three, 400 yards receiving. Just write it down. And, I mean, um, Cam Newton with a running back like that, with those wide receivers in that defense, man, that'd be scary. Yeah. Bart, Don't worry about Frenette. He's, he's really good. Oh, look, I, believe me, I'm hoping he goes to Jacksonville. 
Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm I like to see him. for Jacksonville. I, in Jacksonville or, or the Jets. I'd like to see him. Oh, yeah. New Jets. York City. I mean, that's fine. Done. AFC, I, I don't, don't want to see him in the NFC. Same every five definitely years. Don't, definitely don't want to see him. I have to see him twice a year. Uh, with, once with every, a, what, four right. years yeah. in the yeah, NFC? I'm, I'm telling you. That's once a career. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Bart is in Metairie. Bart, welcome uh, to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Bart. Just talking about the theme of Too Little Too Late, it just seems like this Pelican rudderless ship. I, now they're going to not make the playoffs, and not only are they going to not make the playoffs, they're not going to get that third unprotected pick. So you won't have a draft pick this year. Is that, is that correct? Uh, it is protected one, one through three it, uh, in, in the lottery. If they are the ping pong fall, balls fall their way and they get the first, second, or third pick, they hold on to it. If not, it goes to Sacramento. So, uh, guys, Pelicans? Uh, Dem says, praying for the ping pong balls. Right. That's all I can tell you. See, um, and I don't think the ping pong balls should matter at this point. I really I'm don't. I'm saying yeah. he's praying yeah. for it. I yeah. don't think it's going to yeah. matter. I, I think it, you know, at this point, you've seen what he can do. Um, you know, he put, look, you got lucky. The, the, the organization got lucky with, with right. uh, Anthony Davis. Uh, and, um, you, know, he, you know, he put together a, a group that he thought with, with uh, Gordon and, uh, and Anderson and Drew Holiday and, and Anthony Davis that he thought would take him to the next level. They didn't. So does he get another chance to restart this? I, I don't think he deserves it. And, and look, that's nothing against Del Demps. He's got his family here, and it's horrible to talk about people losing their jobs. But again, pros, sports is a bottom line business about winning, and they got to do something to energize this fan base more than putting Boogie Cousins and Anthony Davis on a poster. And, and King Cake Baby. And there you go, <laughs> which, which we'll be talking about down the line. Let's go to Greg and Homer. Greg, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Greg. Uh, hey, guys. Got a question for your panel. Uh, I like the signings of the two inside middle linebackers. Mm -hmm. uh, my question to you guys is uh, what happens if uh, Reuben Foster falls to 11? Do you take him or maybe use him as a trade bait for other teams? And I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. I would pass on it. You would pass? Yeah. Really? Would you yeah, pass? I'd pass. And, and why, guys? See, I like Ruben Foster, but why? Have you read my mock draft? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't I, don't, I don't think he'd be the best player at 11 right there. Mm -hmm. But I think Derek's going to be there at 11. Right. And he's, well, uh, and he's going to be the. He's going to be the better player. So it's not Derek about Burnett. Ruben Foster, the player. It's just you like guys at, at, at Yeah, at, I, well, at I wouldn't spot. pick Ruben Foster 11. If he was at 32, I'd jump mm -hmm. on it. I mean, guys at linebacker at Alabama, you have to be careful because they play behind such a great defensive line and they have freedom to roam. There's a whole other system they got to learn when they get into the NFL, and it's not easy to adjust. Do you agree so, with that? Yeah, I do. I agree. Um, being from the state of Alabama, trust right. me, my Facebook is all Alabama or Auburn mm -hmm. fans. So, yeah, um, yeah I, but I have to agree that if I'm, I'm sticking with, uh, with, with Derek from, from Tennessee, because um, he's going to fill that maybe outside linebacker. Mm -hmm. It depends on how Peyton and them want to use him or put him at defensive line. To Mandeville and John. John, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, John. Hey, guys. How you What's doing? Um, I have a quick question about the Pels and uh, free agency. Is it realistic in thinking that we could possibly pursue potential free agents like Deion Waiters, Tim Hardaway Jr., Shabazz Muhammad, and after we sign Drew, can we afford any of those guys? Uh, from what I understand, they've got the exceptions at that point. Mid-level exceptions, uh, a couple other exceptions that would be available. So I'm going to say I think it would be difficult, uh, but not impossible. I think it depends on ultimately what they're going to be able to do uh, uh, with Drew Holiday down the line. Uh, but um, uh, I think it's going to be, I think it would be tough. I think they're, they're going to have some restrictions on them with this salary cap on what they can do going forward. Guys, yeah, and just you have, like I said, you've got so much dead money on that bench mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna well, be pretty hard. You don't to, get the ping pong. It's yeah. gonna be. Tough. And, 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 and gonna that, be that's why the the Omera Sheik deal uh, just crushes you. That's why when you look at some of the other deals that were made uh, over time on, on this on this roster, 
I mean, if you were, you could free up that ten million dollars there. If you weren't yep. overpaying right now uh, for for other players, you'd have that money available yeah. uh, to be able to go out and to be able to add to this roster. They're going to have to be very, very creative, sign and trade one of those type of deals to be able to, to be able to upgrade that roster. Because again, as I mentioned, they've got a, they've got multiple exceptions that are available for them. Uh, but again, I think the priority will be signing Drew Holiday. Let's see if we can grab these last couple of callers. Uh, DJ is in New Orleans East. DJ. Welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, DJ. Hey, man. Hey, uh, your guest. Look, a uh, scenario, Eric. Um, if um, the uh, Clippers go out early in the, in the uh, playoffs and Blake Griffin leaves, don't you think uh, Chris Paul would be looking at the Pelicans and thinking it might be a great fit? And I'll hang up and listen to y'all uh, uh, answers. Uh, it, it would be a dream come true. <laughs> you know, if you could bring Chris <laughs> Paul back and pair him with, with Boogie and Anthony Davis. I don't think they have the money under the cap to do it. And I just don't think Chris Paul's leaving Los Angeles. And I don't think Chris Paul's going to take a pay cut. Right. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. But if Blake Griffin leaves, who knows? Right. Last call. Ernest is in New Orleans. Ernest, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Ernest. Yeah, Ernest. Uh, yeah. I can't think of a defensive end's name from Tulane. But I see the play that he seems like a very quick guy mm -hmm. and... Is there any chance Smart. he makes this team? Right. Uh, you're talking about uh, Tensel Smart. Smart in the draft or, or the guy that they picked up last in, in No, 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 no. The defensive end from last from year. From last year. Royce. Um, Royce LaFerre. LaFerre, right, right. Royce, Royce LaFrance. Guys, Royce LaFrance? I, I can always see him as practice squad. Practice squad. That's yeah, what I that's, myself as well. That's, yeah. Right. Ernest, you, had, you also had a question about Christian McCaffrey? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think he would be better for the Saints than. Letting for that, I think letting for that's going to get a, a beating in the NFL. Those guys hit him in college, but couldn't bring him down. In the NFL, they're going to hit him and, and bring him down and hurt him eventually. Uh, I, uh, thank you for the phone call. Uh, look, I love, Leonard, I, I love I love Leonard Fournette. <laughs> love Ernest. But Ernest what, is my guy. <laughs> what the Saints need is a Christian McCaffrey type in that on that backfield. You know, as I mentioned, McGuire. Um, uh, Mixon, McCaffrey, those are all three guys that, that are Reggie Bush slash Darren Sproles type players. And I think that would go a long way in just taking that offense to the next level. Me too. Well, uh, <laughs> well your blog is at? Uh, for Zan on Football. And check out his mock draft. I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, exciting mock draft. Google for Zan on Football. There you go. Anything. Robert O'Shields of ABC 26, Mike Vazan of WGSO Radio. Thank Thanks you, for Eric. being with us tonight Always on Inside New Orleans Sports. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, there's a rebroadcast of this program each and every Friday night right here on WLAE TV at 10 p.m. Also, 9 o'clock on Pelican Sports Television. And yes, now on Cox 130, if you're up late Saturday morning, 2 a.m. on Friday night. And of course, a rebroadcast tonight at 10 o'clock on Cox 130. Uh, you catch me on the radio, 990 a.m. WGSO. That's weekdays, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, you catch us on the TuneIn Radio app. There's a free download for your smartphone or tablet. Also, you can download the podcast, listen live at ericasher.com. All the previous episodes of Inside New Orleans Sports can be seen at ericasher.com as well. Great panel tonight. Thanks to Mike Mazan and also Robert O'Shields for joining us on the program. Also, special thanks to the WLE production staff, including Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, Donovan Joseph, Kenny Juno, Naila Jones, uh, Philip Williamson, Richard King, and my director, William Hill. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week for another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. Have a fantastic week. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show. You're watching WLAE-TV, Channel 32 in New Orleans, in partnership with Louisiana Public Broadcasting.
You're watching WLAE-TV, Channel 32 in New Orleans, in partnership with Louisiana Public Broadcasting.